The name of the message is Fear Not. I know you seek Jesus. We've just read Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. I'm so glad that you're here joining us for this Easter Sunday morning. I have a question for you. Are you facing troubled times in your life right now? Or the clouds of doubt and fear and uncertainty gathering over the horizon of your existence? Perhaps you're troubled about the situation you're in, your marriage, your addiction, your lack of spiritual victory, or the nagging emptiness that haunts your soul and the fear that says, is there anything else than this? Been led to believe that we are a happenstance, an accident of the universe. Once upon a time, the universe blew up and after billions of years, here we are, and in a few years, we're gone, and that's that. And all we got is this. And something inside you is bothered and said, man, I think there's something else. But I'm afraid of what that is. Or perhaps you do have a spiritual sense that there is something more than a random explosion that put all this together. And something more probable than us crawling out of the ooze and the descendants of amoebas and apes. Perhaps you realize, no, you know what, I believe there is a creator. The problem is, I'm not sure that he and I are okay. You might face the trouble today and say, you know what, I really don't want to think about eternity because I'm not really sure where I'm going to end up, and it just bothers me to think about it. I want you to think about this question. You ought to be able to answer it. I believe, biblically speaking, I can say this about every person in this room. In a thousand years, you will be somewhere. Think about it. In a thousand years, you might say, yeah, I'll be in the ground, I'll be worm food. No, you won't. Your body that you're living in right now may be long gone. But you, as a sentient being, will be somewhere in a thousand years. Where depends on what you do with a message like we'll hear today. He said, man, I hope I make it. I don't like thinking about stuff like that. It fills me with fear. If you're afraid, you're in the right place. Not because, guess what, I'm doing you a favor by making you afraid. I believe I'm doing you a favor by showing you you've been afraid and I can give you the message to fix it. So let's go in our story to that first Easter morning. The disciples 
and the Mary and Mary that came to the graveside that day, they were filled with fear. They had thought, man, they were on to something because here comes this Jesus of Nazareth and folks were calling him the Messiah, the promised one, maybe even the king of Israel that will de deliver us and they wanted to be delivered from the hand of Rome. For three years they watched him heal the sick. Man, the lame could walk the blind could see, the deaf could hear, the demon possessed were set free. Nobody could do that. Some folks watched this demoniac that was possessed by over a thousand devils fall down and worship Jesus and those devils leave. Man, they even saw Jesus come in and a young lady that was dead was risen from the dead. Saw Lazarus come out of the grave, still wrapped in grave clothes when he said, Lazarus, come forth. Here comes this mummy waddling out of the, the grave. Man, this is somebody. This Jesus of Nazareth. Not only that, but this Jesus of Nazareth knew so much Bible that the Pharisees that would talk way over your head and intimidate you to say, you do not know the Bible like I do, Jesus kind of took care of them right now. He started to deal with them like he actually wrote the book. Huh. Isn't it interesting that one of, the, one of the names for Jesus is the Word. So there was great hope. Power of God was through this man. They were figuring, man, we're going to, and, and then the week before, he's riding on a donkey. He's going into town, and folks are crying, Hosanna to the king. And they're like, Hoo -hoo, we're going to take over Rome now where things are going to be set in, and the kingdom that was talked about in, uh, in the Old Testament where the, where, where the curse is taken away and the lion will lay down with the lamb, man that's coming, oh, this is good. And everything in a few days turned around, and the people that were saying, Hosanna, are now saying, crucify him. The events of Holy Week must have spun the disciples in a circle. We go from Palm Sunday, woo, to Good Friday, to watching Jesus be betrayed, taken out, kangaroo court, beaten within an inch of his life, crucified on the cruel cross, agonizing for six hours, and then somehow I would think that the people, though they didn't see TV yet, would think, wait, he's the main character. He can't really die. And yet he did. And the earth shook, and the sun didn't shine, the graves were cracked open, but he died. And they took him off the cross, and they put him in a tomb. It's true. He died. Didn't think it could happen, but he did. Now what? Now, the disciples were afraid that the same soldiers that took Jesus were coming for them next. Every bump, every thud, every scurry about 
would have them checking the windows to see, is this the time? Are they coming for us? Are we next? They were afraid. Mary and Mary, that Easter Sunday morning, went to put some spices near the near the grave. Now we know that they put him in a, a grave and rolled the stone sealing the grave so they were going to put some spices around kind of like we would uh, put a plant next to uh, a fresh plant next to the grave something like that. It's a sign of remembrance they were going to do that. They were broken hearted but they were also afraid. But as they come toward the sepulcher, all was not as it should be. The stone was rolled away. Now, what, for, perspe for perspective, if you lost a loved one, three days after you lost a loved one, you want to go visit the grave. Maybe you want to put a fresh pot of flowers there. Maybe you just want to go talk to the grave for a minute, clearing your head, talking like you were talking to the, to the deceased. Maybe you just want to stand there and remember your loved one for a few minutes. I mean, we're talking about three days after you lost him. That's not a long time. Some people still do that. And it's been 20 years, amen, at least on Memorial Day. They're going. Do you imagine going to the grave of your loved one and finding where there was a mound, there's a hole. And the vault that kept the casket the top is off. And the casket is open. Do you think that the first thing that would come to your mind would be, oh, they're risen from the dead? Do you think the first thing that would come to your mind is fear? What now? What now? Now, I was uh, driving someone past a, a graveyard uh, recently, and they kind of got creeped out. And it was the middle of the day, and I, I, it was all I could do to refrain from talking in my deep, crazy voice, because I saw that they were already afraid. But I didn't do it because I was being good for a little bit. I was probably not being that good because I already thought about doing it. Anyway. I was driving past there, like, don't graveyards kind of creep you out? It's all those spirits that are hanging around there. I said, well, I don't think they're hanging around yet, but there's going to come a time that that graveyard's going to get pretty interesting. <laughs> Man, she gets afraid with nothing there. Wait, wait till, wait till the, the folks start coming up out of there. <laughs> Amen. That'll be a little different. Anyway. So they're peeking into the grave, which is kind of creepy. Can you give me that? Mm -hmm. And then they see folks in there. Now, you're already afraid because the grave's open and should be closed. You're already afraid because the body that you thought was in there is not in there. But now you got two angelic beings, some spiritual beings with a glow about them talking to you, do you think you might be a little afraid? Oh man, I just walked into a grave that is now open and there are folks in there but not the right ones and they're talking to me. Oh man, all kinds of reasons to be afraid. And the first message that the angel said was, fear not. Wait, what? I just saw my Savior crucified. I know I 
I'm next. Everything I thought was true apparently is not. The grave is open, his body's not there, and you say, fear not. Now the next words are what the whole of creation hangs on. Listen, fear not, for I know you seek Jesus. You may be here today. And it's been a long time since you've been in church. Well, maybe you've been coming out of habit, but either way, you're in church and something inside of you is not right. I'm not sure if I were to die right now, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure what, or what the future holds. I'm not sure how I'm going to get through this next week, month, or year. You don't understand what I'm carrying. And you come into church, and the first message that the Holy Spirit has had me to give to you through the preaching of the Word of God is, fear not. And you say, you can't tell me not to be afraid. Man, listen, I, this isn't Easter Sunday morning back when it first started, and I'm not there in the, in, in the grave looking and seeing Jesus come up. i got a bunch of other stuff I'm facing. No, tell me, fear not. Listen, fear not, because you're here on Easter Sunday morning. I know you seek Jesus. Now, you may not even know what you're looking for. They weren't really necessarily looking for a resurrected Christ, were they? They came to a grave and found a resurrected Christ. See, I know you seek Jesus. There are some things about Jesus that you need to know. I know you seek Jesus, which was crucified. You're here on Easter Sunday morning. You're seeking Jesus. Now, it may be because you know him, and you have had a relationship with him for a long time. It may be because you know about him. But listen, he was crucified. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And seek Jesus, who was crucified. And you know what? That was prophesied in the Old Testament. You see... Jesus was not a random victim. Jesus was voluntary. Jesus came to die on the cross because he loved you and he loved me enough because there was nothing, no work, no rite, no ritual, no act of contrition, no baptism, no communion, nothing that you or I could do to fix the fact that we have sinned. Amen. But Jesus came and he lived a perfect life, and the Bible says, God commendeth, that means God demonstrated his love toward us in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Jesus came and died I know you seek Jesus. I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. The Bible says in John chapter 10 that I lay my life down. No man can take it from me. And I'll take it again. Man, I don't think the disciples quite understood what he was saying. Yeah, I'll lay it down, but I'll take it back too. And it's the taking it back part that we're talking about now. I know you seek Jesus, which was crucified. Now, wait a minute. I'm looking for Jesus, which was crucified, and you tell me, fear not. How is finding the body of a dead Savior reason for me not to be afraid? Because that's not the, the end of the story. I know you seek Jesus, 
who was crucified. But let's, let's, let's keep going here. You're in Matthew chapter 28. Fear not, verse 5, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. What's the next four words? He is not here. <laughs> and the next four words? Hey, that's why you don't need to be afraid. He's not gone because someone stole the body. He's not gone because you got the wrong grave. He's not gone because of some other weird reason. He's gone because he rose from the dead. Now listen, the, Jesus didn't need someone to roll the stone from the grave so they could let him out. I believe when, uh, when the stone was rolled away from that grave, he was already gone. This was just God's way of saying, okay, world, guess what's behind door number one? You think you know what's behind door number one. Why, be, why should we not be afraid? Jesus was crucified. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And he is risen. See, Jesus had to pay a price on the cross. Why did Jesus die? Jesus didn't die just because he made the Pharisees mad, because you know what? If, if uh, he wanted to, he could have had 10,000 angels come and rescue him at any time. Jesus died voluntarily and vicariously because he became sin for us. Now, I want you to get this. The Bible tells us that, that uh, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us. Jesus, the Lord of glory, the perfect creator God, was nailed to the cross, and when he was on the cross, something happened. He became our sin. Every sin you've ever committed, and listen to me, every sin you ever will commit, Jesus became that sin. God the Father can't look on sin. And it was noon, and Jesus was in agony, and Jesus had become our sin. Everything you've ever done wrong, every thought you've ever thought, every word you've ever said, every deed you've ever done or ever will do, Jesus became our sin. And what happened? Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Not because he was hanging on the cross and said, God, why did you leave me here? He was not saying that. God the Father turned his back on his own son, couldn't look at him because he became your sin. Man. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Here's the deal. God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died to pay for your sin and if you then believe it, and you ask him to save you, then what happened on the cross is now credited to your account. Every sin you've ever committed is forgiven because Jesus already became that sin. But it's not just you get your sins forgiven. He says, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And I'm not talking about just sinless. I'm talking about God taking on your sin. And you taking on his virtue. Whoa. 
If I ask you, how do you know for sure you're going to heaven? You say, well, I'm open, I'm good enough. Uh, I got baptized as a kid, or I, uh, I take communion, or I go to church, or I try to do good to my fellow man, or here's my favorite, I haven't killed anybody. For that, I'm appreciative. Well, wait a minute. If you could do any of those things that would be enough to get to heaven, then what Jesus went through that we just talked about on Good Friday was a waste. Because the Bible says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Jesus died on the cross because there's no other way for you to get to heaven. Fear not, I know you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is risen. He is risen. He applied the blood on the cross. He is risen. He is victorious over sin and death. And he says what? Go tell the disciples. Go tell somebody else. Once you believe, go tell somebody. This Easter Sunday, 2018, I have a question for you. Are you absolutely sure that a thousand years from now you'll be with Jesus? You say, yeah, I live a pretty good life. I'm not good enough. The Bible says all of sin and come short of the glory of God. You say, well, I hope so. Well, that's not good enough either. You can know so, because the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I can say, yeah, you know what, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell. I know that on my own I can't do anything, but I know Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago died on the cross, but I know he's not still in the grave. I know he rose again. I want to trust in what he did and ask him to save me. It's a matter of changing your trust from yourself. You say, are you telling me that I need to be a Baptist? No. You telling me that I need to uh, believe, I, I need to quit believing in evolution. You get this part down, you will, but no. I'm telling you, you need to believe that you're a sinner, deserve to go to hell, Jesus paid the price and asked him to save you. That's the whole purpose. That's the purpose of Christmas. It's the purpose of Good Friday. That's the purpose of Easter. Is to get you to see, I loved you. I died for you. I rose again victorious for you. I applied the blood for you. Now believe me. Will you? Will you believe? <laughs>